Uh, welcome to Show Studios Re Series. I'm Georgie Evans, fashion editor, um, and I'm joined by Nama Chekos Dinana. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm very excited to have you in um, talking about your Autumn into 19 collection. I, um, I know you're particularly busy at the moment, going a bit mental, as it's very close to June. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming in. So I want to I want to talk about this collection specifically because also it's slightly different from your usual collections, where you often nod to Courage Heritage and um, tales of growing up but actually this was a similar tale of growing up but more about your studies and arts moving into art moving away from civil engineering which you studied so tell me a little bit about the starting point for this and and also kind of the process what comes first is it mood boards is it um how do you reference basically that's what i'm asking <laughs> mm. um so it it did start with uh, as you said uh, like moving away from what we've done previously. Uh, I tried to look a lot at the work that, I, that we put out um, and I started seeing that it was maybe not so Kurdish as we would say. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I started noticing that it was much more uh, Scandinavian, let's say, uh, which is where I grew up and it's kind of natural that it's that way. Uh, so that was an obvious choice in terms of aesthetic and in terms of storyline of the collection. Mm -hmm. But so it was also, you know, a sort of disappointment with the collection previous to that. And I think the distraction was that I was really, really trying to do something Kurdish. Uh, and maybe it was like a kind of a, you know, I moved from Kurdistan when I was nine years old, so I don't know how much I can relate to, to yeah. them that much, you know, even though I have a very good relationship with my cousins and so on. Um, so that was, you know, it was a lot of reflecting on the work. Mm. And I also felt that uh, the, the summer collection was kind of a bit out of the, the, what people expected okay, that's um, from us. Uh, so it was, you know, I also wanted to kind of cement the aesthetic, like do this really good and kind of be over with it and then move on to something else, hopefully. <laughs> um, so that was a, a, some of the, the things. And when I was working on that collection, I was still living in, in Sweden, in, in a city called Lund, which is a university city. So I was still very close to, to where I studied. Mm -hmm. And I would go to, you know, to the libraries for research and things like that. And there's no fashion school there, but there's art history, etc. So. Uh, it's not really like there's not a lot of fashion going on there, uh, so you kind of are far like I'm far removed from it when I'm there. Uh, so then this storyline kind of came about uh, that I was I was thinking of doing more something more you know recent let's say rather than looking back at a memory or a possibility of way of life which is the Kurdish story. Yeah. There's that alternative that I could have you know lived there now etc. I wanted to, to focus on something that actually happened and reference that kind of time period. Yeah, nice. Uh, which is the, you know, my student years, uh, in 22, 23, 24, uh, when I was at civil engineering. Do you, like, do you like being in an environment where there's not a lot of fashion? Do you I do, yeah. I do. Uh, right now as well with the studio in, in Antwerp. I mean, even though like people might think that you know Antwerp, there are so many brands there, etc. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's not you know there is a lot of creativity going on, but it's not it's not that much happening as in London. You may have events and you know uh, you have the fashion weeks, etc. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have that, and I kind of I kind of like that. You're learning civil engineering. You're in libraries. You're kind of diving into the books. How is that reflected in this in the collection? What kind of what did you cherry pick from that time? So, well, I was a terrible student to, to start off with. Excellent. Um, <laughs> so I was not really motivated to, you know, I think I was in the beginning because it was the first time I moved away from home. I was also not feeling comfortable in it. And I, I stopped going to school. Um, I st started feeling really heavy of becoming a f an engineer and mm. working in an office and doing sort of the same things over and over again. Um, so, the reference points, you know, in the collection to that is, is a part of it is sort of why I wanted to become an engineer. Um, you know, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of TV with my parents, and 
there was these documentaries about Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect, you know, Dieter Arms, uh, and people like this, and uh, I thought it was very cool. Um, besides, it is cool. Yeah. It is cool. <laughs> besides playing uh, playing football, I was you know into that as well, which is maybe predated. It's probably not <laughs> like that now. Um, so that was one of the starting points for the collection. Then another part was what I was instead of school, what I was doing. Mm. Um, I was partying. Uh, I was painting. Uh, We've got some pictures of your party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, example. Uh, these are like festivals out in the forest. Um, you know, this was what I was engaging in instead of studies. Uh, I was I was painting a lot as well, um, and you know I was just far removed from school after a while. Mm. Uh, and I had some some childhood friends who were at that university as well. They were also very bad students, so we kind of encouraged each other. <laughs> uh, bad influences on each other. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I was thinking of that in the collection as well, in the way that the boys were, and the kind of um, in the colors and the music choices of the show, and also in some of the pieces. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think if you... Oh, I'm looking at some details here before mm. we do that. I think when you look at this generally, you kind of can see... Um, the duality you're talking about in these, this kind of um, stiff, slightly regimented, suited life that you, you thought you were predisposed to have. Yeah. <laughs> and then these kind of bursts of creativity and slightly more rebellious mm. um, looks, which I'm guessing is a little, a little bit of the party coming through yes, <laughs> yes, in yes. student life. Well, I was thinking of these uh, looks as characters, you know, they might be you know, now these boys are quite young, so they do wear that jumper even though it doesn't fit in. They have a meeting on the Tuesday with some contractors, but they go in with that, you know, because mm -hmm. they, they really want to just dress the way they feel. Uh, but you have other characters in these offices which are wearing a full suit, um, a double-breasted suit, uh, which is very classic. Yes, and, very. Uh, they might have forgotten a few things before that meeting, so they're <laughs> not completely correct. Uh, <laughs> they've forgotten that maybe they cut up their <coughs> their shirt color, um, so it's kind of flopping out. Uh, they kind of have maybe have forgotten the. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you have these these cuts, which we actually did in the shirts, which are we didn't cut them, we just made them like that, so you can actually pull it out. Uh, so this person maybe have forgotten that. Um, he's <laughs> forgotten. In a hurry. Yeah, exactly. Or forgotten <laughs> to to cut off his uh, the sleeves of his double-breasted coat. Yeah, it's very sweet. I love these all the narratives of these students. Tell me a little bit about the making of this because I remember being particularly enamored with it backstage. So this we were, you know, the, when when I spoke earlier about the the, the sort of you know the background of the story. So I try to make it in different areas. Huh? So there is it going into the looks, it goes into the pieces, it also goes into the fabrics. Um, so for in this case, uh, it's, the, um, it's the suit, but how, how do you re-engineer the suit without making it uh, unfamiliar? Mm. So it's still very familiar. It is a suit jacket, but there's something uh, wrong about it. And here is the darts. So these sort of shapes, they are uh, reliefs, we call them, so they are cutouts, and then they are collaged together, um, and then we have done a top stitch on top of that just to show the contours. And the actual motif, it's from, uh, it's from Italian artists. And also we must talk about these beautiful jumpers. So these are beautiful oil paintings, the, the artist in you, kind of moving away from civil engineering, but I had the fabrications behind this is particularly interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so this is made in mohair, but mohair is quite light and we wanted to make something quite big in it. So you have to um, give it weight. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we did, uh, we twisted the yarns to three ply yarns. So we take, instead of taking one, one roll of yarn, we take three and then we twist them before we knitted. And then we knit it as a jacquard, but in the same color, so it just looks plain, uh, but it's much thicker then. Um, and then we have them flat, so we don't the seams on the inside. We don't we don't do them. We just make them completely flat. Amazing. Uh, so you can print on them, and then you can print a continuous print on the on the knit. Uh, so yeah. Just in you know easy. <laughs> 
One of you male. <laughs> yeah, and then the, the actual prints, we, we referenced different artworks and we, we paint it and we digitalize it and we change it uh, and then we put it back on. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of work, but I was very hesitant of, of doing them because they are kind of going against my philosophy in a way. They are very direct and they take a lot of attention from the rest, as you said, <laughs> uh, which is... Uh, but in this case, it kind of fits in very well. I think it's nice that they're the last three, because yeah. it's kind of the full stop. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think they work like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's so interesting when you talk about this, because I've always thought of Namacheco as this beautiful kind of understated beauty, um, but actually there's nothing understated about what you just said. <laughs> There's so much going on behind the scenes, and um, I think that's partly why the ma where the magic happens and why everyone keeps falling in love. And this is also something I really wanted to talk about, this coat, because I remember I frantically trying to describe it um, in my review, but the texture of this was really special. Yeah, um, so it's kind of similar to what they use in running shoes, uh, the mesh, but it's a, very, it's a bit more heavy mesh, and it's usually used for furniture and cars um, and it's, it's, it's a layer of mesh, it's knitted um, in polyester mm. and it's a layer of mesh that's then knitted together with an under layer of mesh so it becomes just one layer uh, that you can, you know, it's like a double face fabric but you cannot separate the, you, it's not splittable. Um, so it's, it, and then it has it has different sizes of the mesh structure, so it creates these sort of lines, which for me is sort of similar to like kinetic art. Um, oh my gosh. That you kind of, you know, you see different patterns from far away and when you're up close. Yeah. And that was kind of the whole, the whole thing as well with the collection, like that state of mind when you're a student, you want to do different things. Every day you wake up, you feel like becoming something else. Yeah, um, that energy. Exactly, so that's why there is you know, quite a lot of different art uh, periods and, and styles that are referenced. And the women's are as well. Yeah, stripes, uh, but like pointillism stripes, so there's a lot of like small dots of color in the stripes when you come very close to it. What's your, what's your usual um, process now? Do you, you mentioned earlier that mm. you kind of were a little bit up and frustrated with previous collections. Do you mm. um, look at this collection now and are you kind of scrap it, I'm starting yeah. fresh? Or do you take this and um, move on to the next one? Mm. What, what's your next approach? So with this one, it was intended as a, like a full Stop. As I said, that the previous collection before this was, uh, I felt it was out of what we were about. So mm. we wanted to cement a little bit that we can do this very well, uh, and then sort of try to move on, uh, because I I think change is very important uh, in what I do. Uh, otherwise, it just it's not fulfilling uh, the need for me. Mm. Uh, so now you know. It's not, it's not a big disappointment with this collection. <laughs> I um, hope not. <laughs> but uh, it's, also, it's also something that we kind of been very close to for three seasons now. Mm. Uh, so you just have to move on from it. Uh, purely like if you speak about garments and aesthetic and the, the kind of look. So that's what we are trying to move away from now. Okay. Yeah. So that's a little bit of the process. Like I think of it as in steps. Um, there's this that we explored for three seasons, there's something else that we work on now that maybe we work on for two seasons, and then when you kind of feel finished with that, okay. you can move on. That's so interesting, almost yeah. like little experiments. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. Because you discover a lot when you do it, and then for me the show is also very important. Because it's after that that you really see what, what you did. Mm. Um, so it's only, you know, when you've done one show and that type of look, uh, aesthetic, um, then you understand, okay, what does it, what should you more do? And then after sometimes, like with this one, you feel that there's not much more you can do. Mm. Uh, so you try to move on. Okay. And I remember reading actually that this um, was a, ch a challenge as well, this mm. collection. So is it each collection is 
really pushing yourself? Yeah, it is, because I, I must say, uh, I didn't study fashion, so I do have a wonderful team in Belgium. Uh, they are much, much more talented than me <laughs> uh, in terms of, you know, sewing, uh, pattern making, uh, the technical aspects. I'm very, I'm very interested in it mm. and I try to be very geeky about it. But since they are so, so experienced in that field, uh, I have to, I feel that I have to challenge them. You know, there's no point that I, I make them do things that they're already able to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is a, that is one constant challenge, you know. Uh, That's exciting. Yes, you can kind of see in their faces if you give them something simple, <laughs> and that they kind of bored with it. You're the mad scientist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> um, well, I'm very very excited about next season, as I'm sure a lot of people and viewers are too. Um, thank you so much for coming and chatting to us, um, and talking through the Autumn Winter 19 collection. Thank you.